Today I'm going to be walking you through how to make your own skateboarding game in Dreams using an engine I've created. So yeah, let me just walk you through how to use the Cheap Skater engine and create your own Tony Hawk-like game. So this is a brand new scene and what we're going to do is search for the Cheap Skater engine elements collection. This includes all the objects and the engine for creating a Tony Hawk-like game in Dreams. Now the first thing we need to do is import the Cheap Skater 2.0 main engine. Now you can put that wherever you like. I'll just place it underneath the map right here. So if we hit play mode, we'll see that we've spawned into a test map for the Cheap Skater engine. It has all the elements and it shows you how they can be put together to make a game, such as grinding rails, collecting items, goals, and using uh, half pipes. There is also the ability to program gaps. So how do we create something completely new? Well, first of all, the first step is to find this little glowing block and delete it. Then we need to go all the way back up to our new level. Now, we go back to the Cheap Skater collection and we place down a Cheap Skater level manager. It's our own little glowing block that controls the game, the goals, etc. So let's scope into it and it includes the sun and sky and all the data here in order to make our game. The first thing we need to do is go to the spawn points. Now this one here is the initial spawn point you will always start at and this in here is tags for spawn points if you die or fall out of the map. So you can place these wherever you like but for today I'm just going to place the main spawn point. So if I place this down here and press R3 to start the scene, our skater has spawned and this is where our level will begin. Okay, rails. Next step, we go into the Cheap Skater engine elements and we look for Cheap Skater straight grind rail. And this will be a simple rail to grind on. Let's just place it here and let's go into play mode and test it. Jump and press triangle to grind on the rail and we see that it works. We can change the sound effect the rail makes by Disable preview invisibility, scope in and open the grind point microchip. And we go here to this variable called grind type. As we change the variable to different numbers, and now it's concrete, and I can change it again, and the rail will become wood. All right, now, how to adjust the rail itself. What we do is we go into show hide and we turn on connectors. This, this slider is the length of the rail and we can see that it is set at 30 meters. So if we want to extend the rail, we simply make the slider longer and then we can edit the sculpt or make a new sculpt to change the size of the rail physically. I'll just do this quickly. Yeah, but it would be much longer. But that is how you adjust the rail. Never ever resize or flip the rail because that will break it and it, yeah, it'll break it. <laughs> All right, next up is quarter pipes. We go into the collection and we find cheap skater quarter pipe. And basically we just place it down. Once again, never resize or flip these objects. So I want to get another one on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll rotate it and then we should be able to test out our half pipe. And here we go. Simple as that. You can feel free to change the sculpt inside, however you like. But keep in mind that whatever you do to this, the entire object of the quarter pipe must be labeled as a machine 
or it will not work, work properly. Do not label anything else in the scene as a machine unless you want to mess up quarter pipes. We also have a circular rail. So let's import this into our scene and we place it down and play the game. And we have a giant circular rail that we can grind. If we scope in and open the circular rail microchip, we've got a bunch of options here, such as grind speed. And we have a toggle here for an incomplete circle rail. So if we turn this on, and then we scope into this connector here, we can see that the rail will only grind around here to here. So that is what you will use if you want to create a rail that doesn't go in a complete circle. The circular grind rail, however, although it cannot be flipped, it can be resized. And that's where the speed slider comes in. Because if I make it small and then grind on it, notice it's very slow. So if I just go back into edit mode and put it all the way up, it's a lot faster. Now, if you want one rail to transfer to another rail, simply all you need to do is make sure the ends of the rail will connect. So if I phase these into each other, you don't have to do it so abrupt, but as long as two rails are intersecting with each other, if I go into play mode and grind that rail, it should transfer to the next one. And that's how you create like a line of rails. Okay, now creating gaps. We go back into the collection and we look for cheapskater gap logic. And this is a little microchip that we will use to create gaps. So we open it up and since we're creating an air gap, we jump from one uh, ramp to the other. We need to put a zone on each ramp, so, so we put one here, we'll just do it really sloppily for now, but yeah. And since it's an air ramp, we need this variable modifier to be turned on. If we were making a manual gap, manual from one place to another, we would use the manual. Uh, variable modifier. If it was a grind uh, gap, we would use the grind uh, variable modifier. The gap name is inside this timeline, so if we want to name the gap anything, let's just name it no. And let's see if our air gap will work. Jump from one, and there we go, there's the gap. So it's basically just get your skater from this zone to this zone and be doing an in-air action, a manual, or be in a grind, and it's that simple. A quick few little notes. If you have a sculpt, say, out of bounds, you can make it inaccessible by going into the label and setting it as scenery. So this way, if you fall out of the level, you'll automatically bail and just get respawned back into the game. It's that simple. In the level manager, there is a music chip. If you open up the music chip and open up music, you can place whatever you want in there. Just sounds, whatever. <laughs> Let's just get a, a music from here and stick it in. But anyway, we go into play mode and if we open up the options menu with the touchpad, we can adjust the music. So if you want to change the skater's voice, such as from male to female, you can open up the skater's chip here, and then up in the top right we have a voice chip. Now right now it's stuck on male 2, but we can turn that off and then change it to female or male 1. And now it is female, for example. Alright, next up let's make some skateboarding goals. So right here is our persistent goals. These are goals 
that are always active and have no time limit to complete. So let's say we want to create a goal where we collect shred letters. It's like Skate from Tony Hawk, basically. So we turn this on, and all these tags here will be a spawn point for a letter. So if I play the game right now, all the letters have spawned in the block here. So I'm just going to move these down into the level that we have. I'll open up each one and just move them. Now that we've moved all the spawn points down to ground level, if I go into play mode, here are the letters and I can collect them. And that's an example for a very simple, always active goal. But next, let's move on to NPC goals. So these are goals given to you by NPCs, much like they would be in Tony Hawk's Underground. We've already got the first goal program. This is NPC goal one, and there we go. The first thing we need to do is take the goal start and move it from the default position and move it, let's say, down here. Now we need to place an NPC down. So let's go into the collection again and place down a cheap skater goal NPC. Now if we go into game, into play mode, and talk to him and ignore that message, he will give you a default goal. And right now he's telling me to get 50,000 points, and as soon as I complete it, and there we go, and he congratulates us. So now I'll explain how to create a new goal NPC from scratch, basically. We go into the engine elements collection, and we add a new goal NPC. So this is goal NPC 2. We go into his microchip, and now what we're going to do is we're going to identify this NPC as the second. So we need to go into all three of these chips here and change number one to number two. If you were adding more NPCs, you would change it to three, four, etc. Active goal two, NPC goal two. Now we need to go back to the level manager and copy this entire data for the first NPC. So now we'll change NPC goal one to NPC goal two. And we go inside the chip and we would change active goal one to active goal two. We would place the goal start wherever we wanted it to be. And this here is the goal that the NPC will give you. So right now it's got the same goal as the first NPC. What I want to create now is a different goal. So let's delete that and here are some examples. I've shown off the shred goal. Combo goal works pretty much the same. Let's create a gap goal. So I'm going to copy this default chip and move it into my NPC2's data. Now I'm going to hook active goal up to here and open the gap goal. And this is the gap goal logic. So here we have the required gap, which is gap no fear. Gap no fear is our gap all the way down here. So when you've cleared the gap, it activates this variable called gap no fear. And when this variable is registered, that will go towards completing the goal. So now we have a required trick kickflip, so we could change this to, let's see, uh, impossible. So now if I do the gap no fear and do an impossible, it will clear the goal. So here's a little notification in the top that says clear the gap with a kickflip. So I would change this to impossible. with proper English, I might add. Now, if we go to that NPC, a skater do this awesome thing, clear the gap with an impossible. So let's go to our gap and do an impossible. And that's the, that's how you do it. It's very simple. It works very similar for collecting uh, shred letters, etc. 
and with all these elements you can string them together and create the same sort of thing that I have created previously with the nuclear power plant and you can play Dreams Cheap Skater now if you want to check that out although it is on a, a little bit of an outdated engine so yeah with the Cheap Skater engine elements collection you can create a game much like Tony Hawk in Dreams uh, you can go nuts and do whatever you like go ahead it's out of my hands now so hopefully uh, a few people could uh, enjoy messing with this. Thank you and uh, see ya.